My name is Beth Kingsley and I teach third grade at Ross Local Schools and I am self-contained and teach all subject matters. To begin my project-based learning lesson, I started with the standards. In our case, I chose to recount fables, myths, and fairy tales from diverse cultures and as well look for the moral and the lesson that were in them. In order to prepare the students to work with fables, We've been doing a lot of work with them in our small guided reading groups. The kids are working at their own levels on various aspects of the fables, from maybe working on fluency with some groups up to talking about the morals and how they can apply them to their own lives. So what have we been doing a lot in our guided reading groups? Everybody's been studying different parts, but in guided reading, what have we been working on a lot lately? Emma? Fables and what's the other one we've been talking about, Reese? Fairy tales. Fairy tales, good. So who can tell me some of the fables and fairy tales that we've been talking about? From there, I developed a driving question, and in my case this was, how do we share fables, myths, and fairy tales and their morals or lessons with people outside of our own classroom? So what we're going to work on is I want you guys to help me answer this driving question. This is kind of the objective of our lesson today. How could we share the morals and lessons of these fables with people all over the world? We had already done several technology things with our iPads that we happened to have. Uh, the kids had used Puppet Pals, they had used Animoto in the past, they have Google accounts so they made Google presentations as well as using iMovie and they also used QR codes in order to um, link to things easily. They had already done a QR code scavenger hunt in our classroom and were very familiar with using the QR codes. After introducing the driving question to my students, they were really excited about it. They had all kinds of ideas of how they wanted to share with other people, from making phone calls to going and visiting others. But when we narrowed it down using technology, they were excited to brainstorm, which was our anchor activity. Sam, come on, you can like, make a little puppet show and videotape it. We can make a puppet pals video! <laughs> now I ran out of one, so I need to make another one. Let's put Puppet Pals video. You could make characters into puppets, right? So let's talk Puppet Pals. Anything else? Michael? Like making sideshows? Google. Do you remember what they're called? I heard it. Could we make Google presentations of them? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's going to run into the next one. Okay. Oh, all of our ideas up here, let's go back through them, and let's think of the ones that we could do the most work with, right? I found a book of fables in our school media center, and each fable had a different page, so it was easy to break up. I gave each small group of students a fable for them to work with. They read it together and decided what technology tools would be best used with their particular fables. They decided most of the groups to use small Puppet Pals videos because they really enjoyed making Puppet Pals videos and one group decided to use iMovie with theirs because there was a frog in it and they wanted to be able to make it blow up. So of course that was important. Before I started the PBL lesson for the day, I actually had moved students around prior to and put them in groups where they were ability leveled so that I had a mix of abilities within each small group that would be working together. So I had some higher ability level students, some more average students, and then some lower ones that need a little bit of help and a little bit of encouragement from their peers. Okay, tell me where you guys are in the process so far. I had the idea of like putting it all in one script and lining it out like I did on this before I knew that we had to write it. Right, because right. we need to put it in our own words. We totally need to put it in our own words. Once the students had chosen their fables, had chosen their method of technology that they were going to use for it, of course they wanted to get started right away. I no longer was guiding the lesson nearly as much as I had been at the beginning of it. I was more facilitating and going around to each small group and seeing what kind of help I could offer them. A lot of them needed um, some structure as to what they were going to do for their Puppet Pals video. So a big thing was to have them start writing scripts. So we wrote scripts or tried to encourage some storyboard writing, which they kind of seemed reluctant to do and ended up writing more scripts even for the iMovie. I made copies for them so that each group would have their own scripts that they could highlight, just like real movie stars. 
And they did a great job with it. And they were excited to start taking pictures to make their own characters for Puppet Pals. They worked really hard with using Google in order to find some characters to go along with their fables and cutting them out for their Puppet Pals videos and even making some creative masks for their iMovies. Once all their projects were completed, the entire group was happy with it. They had watched it over and made sure that it was exactly what they wanted it to be. The kids had the opportunity to present them to the class. The video you are about to watch was created by Sam, Emma, Elijah, Cheyenne, and Aaron with Puppet Pals. The characters are blackbirds and a peacock, and the blackbird learns to be himself. Enjoy. Once upon a time, there was a blackbird, and, and one day, he saw some peacocks. If only I was as beautiful as they were, day after day, he couldn't sleep or eat thinking about the peacocks. One day, the blackbird had the idea to follow the peacocks around and collect the feathers that they dropped. Before he knew it, he had a lot of glorious feathers. He walked proudly in front of the peacocks. So in order to share it with other people, we decided that we would use QR codes. The kids made QR codes after we uploaded the videos to a small website. I did the uploading of the videos to the website so that they would be um, easily done and all just moved into the same thing. I used a Google site for that. So then we made a QR code, printed it onto a label. The label was then placed into a book that's in the media center so that all the other students in the entire building can use one of our school iPads, scan the QR code, and go right to our retellings of our fables.